Thank you everyone for coming. My name is Daniel Denver. I'm a co-chair of Reclaim Rhode Island. We're here to have this press conference to celebrate the Attorney General of Rhode Island prosecuting Pioneer Investments, one of the state's largest and worst slumlords, which we've been working to or with tenants to organize over the past year. Uh, I'm going to turn it over first to our lead, Reclaim Rhode Island's lead tenant organizer, Shana Crandall. Today's historic prosecution of Pioneer Investments and its owner, Anurag Sareka, is a testament to the power of tenant organizing. It also speaks to the critical importance of public officials willing to hold slumlords accountable for their rampant violation of the law. Reclaim Rhode Island and Pioneer Tenants United have, been, have spent the past year knocking on nearly every door of the hundreds of units they have across the state. Tenants suffering from atrocious conditions amid skyrocketing rents organized together and fought back. Today's a great victory for pioneer tenants and for all poor and working class tenants across Rhode Island. The prosecution, this prosecution of a slumlord for widespread violations of the law is unprecedented, at least in recent Rhode Island history. It sends a clear message that no slumlord is above the law. The attorney general has tenants backs. Roughly two dozen Pioneer tenants bravely came forward to tell their stories to the Attorney General. Pioneer tenants also told their stories at rallies and State House hearing, hearings, bringing unprecedented awareness to the fact that slumlord abuse is a critical part of this state's dire housing crisis. Today's news should be a warning to every negligent, abusive, and predatory landlord in the state that the era of collecting rent for abhorrent conditions is over. It's now clear that the AG stands ready to crack down on slumlord abuses. But what about other public officials? We call on state legislators to take action now. If our lead mitigation laws were properly enforced, we, would, we could all but eliminate childhood lead poisoning in Rhode Island. The Attorney General has three bills being voted on tonight and over the next several weeks uh, that would give us the enforcement tools we need to end to achieve this. Lead poisoning is a preventable tragedy and we call on the legislature to pass these three bills this session. Filing constant evictions against tenants is a commonplace tactic uh, used by slumlords, including for pioneer tenants in retaliation for organizing. We call on the state legislature to pass legislation now, this session, to allow for tenants to have their eviction records sealed. We also expect the Senate to follow the House and pass legislation banning rental application fees. Next session, we urge legislators to fully protect tenants from the worst slumlord abuses by imposing rent stabilization and stronger protections against eviction. We call on city councilors and mayors across the state to take action now. Cities and towns across the state have allowed slumlords to violate minimum housing standards with impunity, sometimes despite the best intentions, uh, and sometimes because of absolute indifference. We've seen this firsthand time and time again. Pioneer owns properties across Rhode Island, particularly in Pawtucket, Central Falls, West Warwick, and Woonsocket. We applaud Central Falls for their leadership on addressing slumlord conditions and call on all municipalities to work with Reclaim and with Pioneer Tenants United to pass into law uh, new anti-slumlord ordinances. Pioneer is far from an isolated problem. Slumlords are the norm for poor and working class tenants across the state. Thank you. Thank you, Shayna. Next up, a key leader of Pioneer Tenants United and a current Pioneer tenant, Melissa Grusey. I've been a pioneer tenant since July of 2017. So 
So my breaking point was when he had tried to evict me seven days after my first time being ever late in five years. That was May of 2022. I had already told him my kids were in COVID, had COVID, and I was with them at the hospital, and I told him my situation proceeded to still evict me. During that time of eviction, he raised my rent to 1950 instead of the 1750 while doing the eviction process. As of one person, I tried to go to code myself back in 2020, which is my first report and where he failed the inspection on my home. It took Reclaim to come to me after I had been evicted and Jordan saving me during my eviction process from Center of Justice to stop the eviction that I knew that my one voice was not enough. Reclaim Rhode Island came to me and I felt heard, validated, and I found out there was other stories about other families that were living the hell I was living. I have lived in a rat infested home. My home has had water damage, mold, there is lead paint. Yes, my daughter is in normal limits of lead, but there should be normal, no normal limit of lead in her body. I've lived with not feeling safe in my own home. And now that I've spoken up in the last year, I have been retaliated against. I have now two new evictions on my record due to speaking out. I have caught Anna Ragsarika on recording saying that due to speaking up and making noise at Reclaim, that is one reason why I need to get out. So with Reclaim Rhode Island, I have been with them, worked with other tenants, found out so many more stories. It's not just me, it's not just pioneer tenants, it's, it's the whole state is in crisis right now. What's happening to me now is he has now put those evictions on me. I've had 13 landlords tell me no to even rent to me. So how can I get out after I've lived in poor deplorable conditions since my first time of having a problem in 2018 to now, and now I'm stuck. So what's gonna eventually happen is I'm gonna end up homeless with three children because of a slumlord not being accountable for their actions. I'm just asking that we all stick together and really make people accountable. Yes, we're making him first accountable and I'm so proud of the work we've all done in the next we've put out because this shit is scary to speak out and there's so many more that want to but now that the ag has shown that they have our back i feel more confident more people will finally speak out i just ask that we all keep going forward stay together and we will make sure all landlords are held accountable for their actions thank you melissa grusi m-e-l-i-s-s-a g-r-u-s-s-i Thank you. Melissa's story is an exemplary one of why the legislature needs to take action to pass a law that will allow tenants to petition to have their eviction records sealed. Uh, next up, another Pioneer Tenants United leader and former Pioneer tenant, Renee Horn. Good afternoon, my name is Renee Horn. My last and final, final winter in my Pioneer apartment, we had no heat for four days. My 15-year-old dog was freezing on the floor. When fun, finally somebody came to fix it, we learned that our furnace was at risk of emitting carbon monoxide and catching fire, and or catching fire. We made re repeated attempts to get them to address it, but they did nothing. We had kids in the house. We knew that we had to get out of that apartment before the next winter. When I got a flyer from Reclaim about meeting, it felt like someone had been listening in our conversations. I was a little paranoid. It may, may be Anarag sending somebody to talk to tenants. Because we were so frustrated with everything, my breaking point was at that first meeting when we met the twin babies who had been lead poisoned. When you start affecting children's health, that's when I knew I had to fight. In my last conversation with Anurag, he said to me that what I think and say doesn't matter because I just sit around all month waiting for my check. You know what? You might be right, Anurag, because it's what we think and say that matters. Pioneer Tenants United. Anurag, your actions of bullying, threatening, and your lack of regard for human life finally have consequences. 
Last but not least, I want to thank the Attorney General's office for listening to our many concerns. We all deserve a safe home. Thank you. Thank you, Renee. Next up, former pioneer tenant, Christian Velasquez. And we'll take questions after, after he speaks. Christian. Hello, everybody. Thank you for joining us today. Um, so I'm going to start off by saying again, thank you for coming in. And um, I'm a former pioneer tenant. Uh, me, my wife, and my two kids at that time were living in Central Falls. Um, and I've noticed, I'm going to be very pretty much uh, blunt and sweet. Um, this morning, my, my son was hungry. He just screamed. He is three years old. Um, they're supposed to start, start school in September. They cannot, only because they are refused to be diaper changed. They have to be uh, hand fed still. All of this do like this. Um, me and my wife just stare at the kids. We love them with all our hearts. We don't know how to help them. We talked to um, NRX Recom. He kind of brushed it off. He, the response he gave us was we had our lead certificates. That's the only response I've gotten him over the past year. Um, it's it's sickening the fact that you know he hasn't acknowledged us. He hasn't reached out. And it's kids. You know what kind of human soul doesn't care about kids? Hmm. And if and if it was me, I'll reach out. I'll try to help any way that I possibly can. Take you know some type of you know. It's your fault. You should have taken consideration and try to help these kids. Um, my daughter, thank God, is starting to slowly speak. You know, she started saying daddy a couple weeks ago, um, and it's a blessing in itself. My son needs a little bit more work, but you know, we're here, we're fighting, and it just, it just, I'm here a year later after moving out of these apartments, I'm here helping out reclaim because this is what I want to do. To stand there and see my kids go through what they're going through makes me sick. And I don't want other families going through that. And I will stand here next time and the time after that. And make sure every single slum nord knows that we're here. And we're gonna keep fighting. And I apologize that my wife and kids might not be able to hear, be here with me today, but they are here. And when this story, and I just want you guys to know, and I want Interact Record to know that we are here and we are fighting and we're not gonna stop. So I appreciate everybody joining in. And thank you. Um, if everyone could please come up who is who spoke, um, happy to take any questions. Well, maybe we covered it all. Yes, <laughs> Christian. Um, how old are your kids now? I'm sorry, I missed that part. So I have three babies, one is six months old. They got their babies born in a separate apartment, so he's doing fine. I have two, they are twins, they are three years old. Um, yes, the second birthday when they had their results come in, and they had the 
So we did everything we needed to do with them. We came in, uh, we found out all the people were, you know, they came in and checked. Told there was a bunch of them in this apartment. You know, they told the landlord. And then we were told to kind of, you know, stick, stick around and try to figure out, try to, you know, wait for Lilo to do what he needs to do to fix the apartment. But, you know, as a parent, I didn't want to do that. Uh, a really close friend of mine gave me his house. He bought a house and said, take this for now. And um, it's a blessing in itself. Uh, so since then, I re uh, moved out immediately. And my, thank God, my daughter Jamali is uh, led for, as of right now. And my son still has a little bit of way to go. So they are progressing, and I can see it in their development. Um, but yeah, since that, that's why I kind of had little red flags before the blood draw. We noticed that they weren't, you know, sick. Why is he not crawling yet? Um, you know, he, you know, he's not doing certain things. He's not reaching his milestones. And I've seen him not doing anything. So we're working to his heart. We didn't know what we were doing wrong. And then once we got that, that call, we just made it to him. And I just wish that he was kind of there to kind of support us. And it was more like, that's not my problem. So, no problem. Can I ask uh, yes. what what you think justice looks like? What would be the I mean, the Attorney General suing? But what does that look like to have, to bring Anarag to justice? Anybody have a? If you speak, just step up to the mic. Yeah, feel free to. So right now, this is historic. This has never happened. Right. So we honestly can't even put a measure on it. The one thing we can say is a landlord is going to be held accountable. There, that means if there's one, there's many. Mm -hmm. That means if we can get the AG to make all landlords run their business as a real business with policies, regulations, and things like that, then we won't have so many slam slumlords eventually right. and registries that we need that we as public can actually look at our own uh, evaluation of slumlords. So we don't know what it's going to look like. We know it's still a lot of work, but we're going to get through it, and at least we are going to hold somebody accountable right. finally. So Melissa, the AG is saying that because he has such a small office, and he knows there are more like this out there, it's like so hard to find them all and prosecute them all, but he hopes in prosecuting this one, then maybe it'll kind of like scare the others into doing the right thing. Do you think that'll work? So my hopes, and this is something that I've talked to in general throughout this, it's my hopes that this gives that blinker in all landlords. Now, we're not saying just mom and pops. We're saying these corporate landlords that own thousands of little apartments. We hope this gives them a blinker of, oh, shit, yes. let's fix our stuff. Let's let's get those inspections done because guess what? The state's looking at one landlord. That doesn't mean they're not going to start looking into all landlords because it's a, it's a problem across all of Rhode Island. It's not just him. Right. So I'm hoping this gives blinkers to all landlords, all of you that you have seen, all of us talking about all these policies and take note, tenants have rights. We have a right to complain. We have a right to ask for just simple fixes. We're not asking luxury. We're asking bare minimums to live because this cycle that they're causing us, if we're in a cycle of stress, depression, anxiety at home, we take it to work. We're not functioning well at work, but you want our money for rent. It's a whole cycle of abuse yeah. that they're causing. So that's what we're hoping for. Yeah. Uh, this prosecution in combination with a lot of the tenant protections that are up this session, I think will have an effect on some lords, right? If, like we mentioned, the uh, constant eviction is a major tool that some lords use. And if tenants have the right to petition to a seal of eviction records, that's one weapon out of the some lords hands. So uh, in terms of the prosecution of Pioneer in particular, this is unprecedented and we don't know exactly what to what outcome to expect, but we'd like to see this landlord no longer renting unsafe apartments and we'd like to see uh, all of these apartments made permanently affordable and well-maintained housing uh, for Rhode Islanders. And without getting into specifics, are there other landlords that are coming onto your radar that might need some attention? We look at top evictors and bad conditions uh, and so if, if, if that's the condition of the apartments and the way you're cycling tenants through the eviction machine then you're on our, our radar. Thank you. Uh, yes, I right, just have one more thing just to add to that. For justice to me is um, my, 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 no, my son and everything is I just don't want to hear a uh, kid getting a poison ever again. Yeah, right. From, so from early uh, 1900s to now, you know, it's gone down. 
I want it to be zero. Sorry. That's my name. Oh yeah, sorry. <laughs> okay. Exactly what I thought. Probably goes out of my control. Um, Green claim actually knocked on my door a couple of days later, uh, which was a blessing in itself. I was uh, I had no power. I sat there and I'm, I was just like, what, what are we gonna do? There's nothing we can do. You know, if he's not gonna help us, we're just gonna have to do it ourselves. We're gonna do it with doctors and stuff, and we just have to keep them away from the bathtub. The bathtub where we give our kids our bath had lead poison. So I was defeated. And he just knocked on my door. I went, I went, and it was the best decision I made. And from that, they gave me the strength to fight. And from that going forward, I'm going to continue for other families because a lot of tenants are scared. They're terrified. You know, and you tell you something about, you know, your kids are sick or, you know, they have blood poisoning, it's terrifying. You can never even think about considering that for your children. Um, so hearing that, you know, I don't want no parent here. And I promise that I will fight day in, day out to make sure that no parent has ever heard of me. Okay, so my name is Christian Velasquez, C H R I S T I E N Velasquez, and V E L A Z Q U E Z. You're a former tenant? Former tenant, yes. What city was it again? Well, Central Thank you for the You said today you think you're doing better. Can you describe what that process was? Okay, so um, it took a little bit, so moving out of that apartment. So moving out of that apartment was the first, the first thing that we had to do. We had to get out of there and kind of you know, be you know, trying to get out of this, the bad living situation. So that was our first step, was to make sure you know, we are in better living conditions and the, the lead was out of our hair. Um, to the point where we had to do lead wipes, we had to lose, lose the nightmare. So to bring that down, we had to go follow the rules, you know, get them out of there, no shoes in the house. Um, because lead's in dirt, lead is in every single place, so they're already elevated. So we wanted to make sure it was as low as possible. Um, with that, you know, the, what the doctors, you know, telling us, you know, iron, uh, make sure they eat the lead stuff, which is a little difficult because with the lead poisoning, they are very specific to their needs. Mm -hmm. um, so we just went by the book. You know, the doctor kept telling us what we needed to do. We got it brought down, we got it brought it down. Um, and try to make the house as safe as possible for our kids. Um, so, you know, again, thank God my, my daughter is at E2, which is under, uh, anything under three is uh, lead safe. And she was, I think, at 11, 11 or 13. And my son was 11, 21. And now my son is at 11, 10. So he's gradually going down a decent amount, but it does take time. Um, so that's at the point where we are. So it's slowly, it's, it's, uh, slowly but steady. But again, um, very emotional just even thinking about it because like, she comes up to me and she just says yellow and she has a yellow block in her hand and I never thought that was a good day and I would be able to see it. So just, it's just very hard for me and I can't put myself down and I love it. But again, I do not want to see any other kids go. Thank you. Um, I think that's another occasion just to emphasize that Chris's building did not have a lead certificate and the rental registry that is being proposed by the Attorney General require all landlords to have that lead certificate and have that information be accessible to tenants and prospective tenants, and a tragedy like this could be prevented. So we need those enforcement tools to pass this session. I just want to go back to your question. Yeah. Um, I think a part win is getting landlords to kind of not focus on the dollar and focus on human life. Right. These are all people. We're all people wanting to have a safe home. And we struggle every week to pay our rent, every you know, saving every week to paycheck to paycheck to have a safe home. It's the only thing you can hope for. If you don't have a roof over your head, you can't thrive in life. And if you don't have a safe home, you're not going to thrive. So I want to bring awareness to all these landlords that have a lack of respect for human life to get out there and treat people like they should be. Give them some respect and dignity. Thank you. Thank you.